Hi guys, I'm going to talk about Baxter International's strategic challenges. So Baxter was founded in 1931 and they are a medical device uh, company and they deliver products and services that are essential building blocks of healthcare. And they serve over 100 countries and their products include IV solutions, systems and administrative sets, IV infusion, parental nutrition, perioperative, perioperative care, pharmacy devices and software, acute renal care, and home and in-center dialysis. So their hospital products, they have hospital products and renal products, two different segments, and the hospital products are 62% of what they sell and renal is 38% and renal refers to like dialysis things that help kidneys and international revenues are 58% and US revenues are 42% of what they make total so recent events actually just recently they just posted about this I think a week ago um, they got a perfect score of 100% for the year of 2018 from Human Rights Campaign Foundation of Corporate Equality. So this is for, like, the LGBTQA community. And the Affordable Care Act a couple years ago has really had an impact on not only Baxter but the entire healthcare industry. And it makes you have to sell your products at a lower price than normal. So this has put a huge strain on companies. They have to, you know, lower their prices when they don't want to, and it decreases margins. And Baxter used to have a bioscience business, and they did pharmaceuticals. And in 2015, they spun it off, and now it's called Buxalta. And I think they did this because the pharmaceuticals, like, they were trying to expand globally, but they were really good at medical devices, and they realized that they weren't so good at pharmaceuticals. And if they just got rid of that business, they could just focus on medical devices going global as opposed to trying to make pharmaceuticals also go global when they're not really into um, pharmaceuticals that much. So since then, and Vexalta, now that they've spun off, has done better. So has Baxter. And Vexalta was smaller and they kind of wanted to focus on uh, pharmaceuticals and be more focused than that of when they were with Baxter. And uh, Jose Almeida started as the new CEO in 2016. So he, the other guy was just retiring. It's not like he got fired or they wanted a new CEO. He was just retiring. So Jose Almeida was the new CEO and they wanted him because he's had a lot of experience in medical uh, and healthcare industry with, he was a leader in a bunch of different companies, a bunch of different divisions. And I think there were like six different companies that big companies too, that he was involved in leadership. So, and he's known for driving down operational costs and he has a track record of success. So he's very driven and innovative. And in a recent article he posted on the website, Baxter's website says, a clear, well-defined strategy is crucial to unify employees and drive performance. A corporate culture is also incredibly powerful, maybe more so, though not always in a productive way. So he really believes that corporate culture drives strategy, but you can also use strategy to drive culture but more so culture is probably more important, but you also have to find ways to take your strategy and ingrain it in the employees' minds without them all revolting against your strategy, I guess. So Baxter International is the last time that I took this screenshot for um, my PowerPoint, which was October 25th, I think. Yes, October 25th. Baxter's stock price was $61.45, and this is a lot better than what they were doing in um, up until the Box Alta spinoff. So until 2015, they were doing like $40 to $45, um, and now their stock price is $61. So it did go up 
every year after the Buxalta spinoff. And their market capitalization is $33.48 billion. Their main competitor, Becton, Dickinson, and Company, um, there's, their stock price on October uh, 25th was 197 So if you go back to Baxter's, that's a huge difference. And their market cap is $44.86 billion. So that's about like $12 billion more than Baxter. So they do have probably more economies of scale, a lot um, more products, and they probably have more suppliers, more um, contracts, etc. So I included the SWOT analysis on here because I thought that it was more comprehensive than the Pastel analysis, and it kind of gives you an idea or a couple insights into what they do, what they do well. Whereas the pastel, it does, but it's just more in depth. This kind of is an overview. So the strengths of Baxter are their ethics and CSR, as you could see with uh, the recent award that they got. And I think it's been called like best top 10 places to work before. So, and they're really good with R&D and innovation, obviously, because otherwise they wouldn't be a front runner in this uh, industry. They have history and expertise because they were founded in 1930s. Um, and they have several large facilities. So their infrastructure is already in place and they put in more money to grow their infrastructure. Their weaknesses are their cost structure and operations. This was one of their um, objectives for 2017 was to improve their cost structure. And then reaching and making products available to all patients in the target market's really hard because you can provide a dialysis machine, but someone might not know uh, about your product, but they might need it. And then driving down costs to improve margin. So like when a different company like Walmart, when your patent's gone, maybe like great value, which they won't, or equate, would, like, make a similar product to what you're making with a patent, um, but let's say they have more economies of scale, like Bet Becton, Dickinson, and company could probably do this and, you know, sell the same product for less. Um, opportunities, they have global markets they are trying to globalize um, and go into new markets that they haven't been there before, and they... Um, there are increases in diabetes and other <laughs> related illnesses that it require dialysis in a lot of the products that Baxter makes, and they are looking to go to developing countries and um, provide cheaper solutions for them to gain access to health care, which is also very ethical. Um, and aging demographics in the U.S., um, the baby boomers and all of them are aging and that is one of the biggest demographics so that is something to capitalize on even though that sounds pretty like unethical um threats laws and regulations property rights um the competitive nature of the industry um exchange rates the affordable care act economic condition conditions of every market especially because they're global and globalization has now increased the complexity of what they have to keep track of legally. So their main strategic challenges that I chose were the substantial competition, intellectual property protection, and introducing new products that keep up with technology. So introducing new products that keep up with technology, it's pretty um, straightforward that you need to invest in R&D. So they do invest a lot of money in R&D already. So they are doing that well, and they are investing more money in R&D than they used to for certain segments, which is good because they need to, because they do have really big competitors like Becton, Dickinson & Company. Johnson & Johnson does make similar products also, um, and they need to um, make sure that they're scanning the environment for trends in technology, make sure that when something does come out that you need to be aware of that you're on top of it. And if there are customer preferences for a certain technology over another one, make sure that you're using that one for your in-home dialysis machine 
um, and make sure that you're researching competitors, trying to figure out what products they're coming out with so that you can also keep up with their technology. And also innovate your existing products. Improve what you already have and make it just as good, if not better, than the competition if it's not already. And then understand the needs of global and new markets. So be aware of what's actually going on in your global markets. If it's a developing country and they don't know how to use the advanced technology, make sure that you adapt to their needs in this new area because, I mean... You want to keep up with technology, but if your target market doesn't want a brand new technology where they're at, then, I mean, just sell your basic, most basic product. And then I kind of put substantial competition and intellectual property protection together because it's kind of goes hand in hand a little bit. Like, make sure that you're hiring good lawyers and attorneys and your all your legal stuff is taken care of well because you want to maximize your patent protection so you don't want them to expire soon at all because if they do, people are going to imitate your products, possibly make them cheaper and better. So you don't want that. Um, make your patented products unsubstitutable. So make sure that when you are making something really good, that it has something differentiated that it's going to be really hard to imitate as a competitor once the patent protection is gone. And then make sure that your quality is better than um, the generic brand. So if your patent is expired, you want to make sure that your product is going to stay ahead of the generic brands because of your brand name, your quality, etc. And then diversify portfolio. I think this is something really big that Baxter needs to do is Make sure that you're diversifying into new segments that you don't already do. And maybe this is, you know, they're doing this globally, but I think it would be interesting to do it, go into new products or develop new products rather than just take your existing products to new places. And acquisitions, Baxter really needs to get more aggressive with acquisitions because um, a lot of their competitors are doing this, and they really aren't acquiring much. If you can acquire other places, maybe you don't even need to make new products. They already have new products, and then, you know, you have a competitive advantage, and you gain something that you didn't have before. So that's what I have as of now. My paper might be better on Monday, but we will see. I hope you, if you have any questions, please comment below. Thank you.